Christy Lee here with Driveline Forensics coming at you today with the steps for a routine maintenance inspection on a Spicer steer axle. The good news is the only tools you need for this job are safety stands, a dial indicator and safety glasses. I've already set the parking brake, chalked the drive wheels, jacked up the front of the vehicle, put jack stands under each side of the steer beam and took the wheels off. So with all that done, let's start our visual inspection. First, we're going to check out the axle beam for bends, cracks, gouges, dents, stuff like that. Look at the mounting hardware and steering connection fasteners for loose or missing pieces. And take a good look at the steering axle stop bolts to make sure they're all present and accounted for. All tightened down and to make sure none of the steer stop bolts are bent or loose. Now look at the knuckle thrust bearings for signs of damage. If you see waves on the bearing or if they have a rough finish, rough streaking, damage, dents, debris, and the like, it could indicate a problem. So now I'm going to get under here and rotate the cross tube toward the vehicle front and then toward the vehicle rear. And I'm using my hands because if there's nothing wrong with the tube, I don't want to damage it. This one's good, but if it didn't rotate in both directions, you just go ahead and replace both tie rod ends. Then check out the cross tube for bends, cracks, gouges, or dents. If you find anything unusual, don't even try to fix the cross tube. Just go ahead and replace it. Make sure the boot completely covers the ball joint of the tie rod end with no cracks or tears and check for seal boot damage. If you find any damage to the boots or seals, don't even mess around with it. Just replace both of the tie rod ends. While we're checking out the tie rods, make sure the tie rod nut is tight and the cotter pin is still there because if it's missing, it could affect the steering. And take a look to make sure the threaded portions of each tie rod end are completely inserted into the cross tube split. That way, you know you can clamp it down correctly, which is obviously super important. A good rule of thumb is to make sure the number of threads exposed from the tube is equal on both left and right tie rod ends. And finally, make sure all of the Zerk fittings are correctly installed. Okay, so all of those visual inspections are helping us kind of weed through issues and rule out problems. Now that we're done and everything looks good, we're going to check for vertical knuckle end play, tie rod end play, and kingpin bushing end play. But first, here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, it's the moment that I've been waiting for. I'm going to have Marty here step in and help me out. Hey, Marty. Hi, Christy. All right, you uh, ready to get put to work here? I am. Okay. Let's go. All right, well, let's get to it. Yeah. All right, let's start with vertical knuckle end play check. First, place the indicator tip on the top of the knuckle assembly. Then apply up and down force with a floor jack or pry bar to measure the total movement of the knuckle assembly. Your end play reading should be between 1,000th and 12,000th. If you aren't getting in that range, you may need to add or remove a shim to get the correct end play. Now we're going to check the tie rod end play. We already checked the threads of the tie rod end, so we're good there. And we checked the cross tube for damage, and we replaced it if there was some, right? To check the tie rod, place the dial indicator so the base is on the tie rod arm. Then place the tip of the indicator on the bottom of the tie rod end at the area that is most flat. Set the dial indicator to zero and move the cross tube assembly up and down and record the reading. If you get a reading of 60 thousandths or more, replace the tie rod right away. Don't let the vehicle back on the road until you do. If the reading is above 30 thousandths, you will need to replace the tie rod end at the next service interval. Okay, we're almost done, so stay with me now. We're just going to check the kingpin bushing end play. To do that, we've gone ahead and put the tire back on because we need to use it as leverage, obviously. Let's check the top bushing first. Put your dial indicator on the base of the axle beam. The probe should go at a right angle to the top lip of the steering knuckle. Now, Marty's gonna push up on the tire and wheel assembly, zero out the indicator, and pull the tire and wheel assembly out. And I'll record the reading. Now let's check the lower bushing. Mount the dial indicator base on the axle beam again with the probe at a right angle on the lower part of the steering knuckle. Then we just follow the same steps as we did with the uppers. If the upper or lower reading is more than 15 thousandths, just go ahead and replace the upper and lower bushings. And that's it, inspection complete. And hey, if you're looking for more insight on other projects, stop by the Driveline Forensics Library. I'll be there waiting to help you out.